Shut up and sit down. Hey folks, right here from Weez and Geezer TV. Weez and Geezer TV is brought to you by nobody. That's right, don't have any sponsors. Sure could use some subscribers. Maybe that's where you come in. So what we're doing today is, uh, I was telling my buddy Dave about this beautiful house I built in this game. He's played a little bit, but not much. And uh, he gave up because he's actually playing another game. Just came in to check it out. But I was telling him about it and he told me to you know, put it on his, send a picture to his Discord. Well, that's easy to do on the Steam version, because you just hit F12, but I'm playing on the Windows 10 version, and I have no idea how to take a picture, or where to find it. So the only way I know to do it is to go in and kind of record, go into my editing software, snap a few pictures, so I might as well just make the video, you know what I mean? Anyway, hey Dave, and I want to say hi to my uh, nephew Cody, who also uh, enjoys this game, haven't got him in on the server yet, but hopefully he's going to be here. Uh, but anyway, we're going to get to it. I'm going to show you the house. I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, this is my character. This is Bert and Ernie. I love Sonoma props on the back here. This is my backyard back here. And this is my beautiful house. And uh, this is a little swimming area here. here. This has got my Megalodon in there. I got a Baryonyx here. Uh, it's hard to see down here. Megalodon, Baryonyx, uh, the Capricucho, or Suchus, or something like that, and uh, the Ichthyosaurus. And this is my beautiful house here. here I guess. <clears throat> this is my garden area. It's watered all the time. It's 300% uh, uh, efficiency. Uh, these two rows here are my narco berries. These are medjo berries. We've got, uh, what are these here? These are the uh, stem berries, tento berries, the azula berries, the amar berries. Uh, citrion, which is your lemons and stuff. Just got some potatoes, some uh, carrots, uh, some corn, and more potatoes down here. And as long as I keep it fertilized and watered, every day I go in there and just get mass berries and stuff. <clears throat> Over here, this is where I make the fertilizer. This guy uh, hands out passive XP. Come by every now and then and pet him. 
And he's delivering passive XP to all these guys. Anyway, this is Fiomia. Trying to get that back out so I can get the letter out there. I don't want to go over it like that. But anyway, that's Fiomia. If you force feed it berries, uh, it will poop. And then you take that poop. I close that other door now. Oh, didn't mean to get on you, Fiomia. Trying to close the door here. That's where the food is kept. And I eat these dung beetles in food. And then they turn it into oil and fertilizer. So, I guess we'll start over here. Uh, we'll just go to the backyard, I guess. Oh, I built this beautiful um, lamp post here. The house, which is a pagoda, the lamp post, and this aviary are all uh, Aaron Longstaff designs that, of course, have been modified, which he expects you to do. Really cool idea. This is my breeding area. Now, I normally, you know, made them off site here and then I use the egg incubator for the young and give me room to move them around and stuff. Refrigerator in case I need to store some eggs, some more food, lots of lighting, so you can see what they look like. Um, <clears throat> I'm re recording this part because when I got inside here in the original video, uh, every other place I went to was just fine, but when I got in here, it was just so noisy that you couldn't hear me, and, and, and I tried everything in editing to make it work, and there was just no way. But anyway, this is, uh, like, specialty-type animals and my workshop, as I had mentioned. And by specialty animals, what I mean is, um, they're like project things I'm working on because maybe they don't have a mate or things like that, or I'm working on breeding them up and that kind of thing. So anyway, uh, the buildings that I'm building, a lot of them are going to have a whole lot of glass. Uh, I'm in a pretty safe area, and I just wanted to be able to, like, look at everything. And it's, like, really cool. Beautiful place here. So, uh, as I said, it's, uh, it's kind of dino storage. Uh, but it's my workshop. This is a map of the world. And we are in 2020. I can't really see the numbers because of the sunlight on the bottom. But anyway, yeah, they go across. I started at 10 just like up there. So it's 2020. We're up there in that little cove at the top. And you see how it's like a horseshoe shaped cove there. We are on the right hand side. Just at the corner where it turns up towards the ocean there. That's where we're at. And uh, this is speed, of course. These are cryo bridges. Because you can use cryopods to store your dinosaurs. So I have mothers and fathers for just about everything. Not everything in here, but everything in the other areas. Somewhere in there or things that I need to breed colors from or still need to breed into the line. Like I just spent a like, couple days working on these Allosauruses. They are absolutely gorgeous. They were okay looking before. They're a lot better now. My smithy, my fabricator, uh, the industrial grinder. Now this is why I need the Sonoma crops because they are like fly and that uh, Dinopithecus is completely blocking that, and I play hell getting past him, and I just haven't moved in there. And uh, so we got the uh, chemistry bench here, we got our forge, lots of storage, and the industrial forge. But again, I, I have the, all this glass, so that you can see outside and stuff, it's just ridiculous. Beautiful place out here. So, what we've got here is a row of um, tech raptors. Now, I do want to eventually get some regular, you know, real raptors, fleshy raptors. Uh, but I do have to have, I want them to be like max level. So I, I you know, I kind of look, 
A lot of times they're just around stuff that I'm taming, so I have to kill them. And if I can find a pair, you know, a male and female that were like 180s or 174 or 180 or somewhere, I would uh, still tame that, but I do these just because they're tech and kind of cool. And because of all the color combinations and stuff, I can look through there and these are basically parts. I can decide what color I want things to be. I kind of like this one though, just the way it is. I might take a look at it or other ones, but I need to make a, a female that looks just like it. So, you know, you just got to kind of work it and stuff. All right. So as I said, these are Dinopithecus here, which are uh, like baboons. I don't know if you can see their face. I'll jump back over here. These guys like to block me. I need to make them so that they don't look. But they're from the baboon family. They were real dinosaurs. Uh, here we have a Iguanodon. Now normally I don't uh, tame Iguanodons. But, um, you know, you're, you're going around looking for stuff to tame and things like that. And maybe you see something being picked on or something and so you kill whatever is being picked on. But you look at these things and you spyglass them and see what level they are. And this happened to be a max level Iguanodon. So it's like, you know, it's nothing for me to tame an Iguanodon. So I tamed it and brought it home. And eventually I will look and I am looking for a female Iguanodon of high level, like 180 or 174 or something like that. The Iguanodon is uh, not a fighter or whatever. You can put something in there so that you can fight or flight. Uh, but he has stamina like you wouldn't believe. But I would put a little bit into him if he was going to be my mouth or like running across the entire earth or whatever. If he tended to need it. But other than that, I'd put it all in, in speed and just you know, make him be able to run away from anything he didn't like and he could sprint forever to get you across the map really fast. I haven't really uh, run him that much, but like I said, he was max level. So I did that. We got the Pelagornis here, and I do have mommies and daddies for a lot of this stuff, including the Pelagornis. I just happened to put it in here because they're so small like that. I just set them underneath these, these dinosaurs like it was getting shade. But I could put it up in the... Uh, <clears throat> in the aviary. Uh, here, of course, we have the Uteranus. You gotta have a Uteranus. And you're like, what do you need a Uteranus for? Well, you need a Uteranus so that if you're gonna do any, like, boss fighting or whatever, no matter what it is you bring, whether it's Rexes or Allosauruses or whatever it is you happen to bring, you're gonna be needing a Uteranus. You might, you might need a Deodon. But I don't have a Deodon yet. Kind of a bucket this thing. Now, she's in here because, I don't know if it's she or he, but I do need a mate for it. Uh, just so that I can get an imprinted one for when I do have to, to use it. But they dis, uh, disperse courage. Encourage all of the, uh, their uh, things that they have command of. Like I said, the Allosaurus is here. They are uh, pack animals. That's why we have one of them that's like elected to be the leader. Has a little orange glow there. And uh, there are, I'm, I don't think they get a mate boost also, but I do have a, a female and two males just in case they do get mate boost as well, but I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> here we have Sonoma Crops, which is of course the little thing I have in my back, which allows you to fly up, it allows you to use it as a parachute, and I don't really have enough room in here, but yeah, you can use it as a glider. Uh, here we have the Ankylosaurus, and uh, he's good for collecting stone and uh, uh, metal and things like that. But he's here because, not only because you use him a lot, uh, or can use him a lot, but because I also remind me that I need to get him a mate. These down here are the Maywing. Uh, Maywing are not a real dinosaur, it's something that they've made up, but they did have uh, flying squirrels back then, and that's what these guys are kind of like. Uh, flying squirrel, platypus looking things. They're gliders, and they are the fastest mode of transportation in the game. They are absolutely amazing. Now, I had some, like, uh, gray and brown ones 
They look kind of like squirrels or chipmunks or something like that, which was kind of cool. But I had this one black and white one, which I have mommies and daddies for now, all, the, all of these. You know, these are all imprints. Uh, but I had mommies and daddies for all these and stuff now, but at one time I didn't. And I was trying to create uh, a mommy and daddy for the black one. And I was mating it with the only thing I had, which was a high level, like, gray and brown one. And it ended up making one of these, this calico looking thing. And I was like, oh my God, that is so cool. So then I, my focus was making a mommy and daddy, you know, male and female of this, and a male and female of that. And I did that. And then I made it that with this so that I could get a black version instead of the brown version. And this is my ride, Calico Jack. His name is actually Calico Jack Black Cadillac. But when you try to fit it on there, it cuts off half the last word, so it's just Calico Jack Cadillac. But, that is uh, my story. But it's a workshop slash dino storage type of garage. And, you know, where I've got animals that I need to breed or whatever. And so we'll be back to your regular scheduled program already in progress. I guess while we're still in the back here, uh, I might as well just go on up into the aviary. Aviary, not aviary. And this is where I keep my ribbon named Door. Ribbon Door. This is my owl. Uh, this is Chopper 2. I try to keep him home because if I happen to have to do a body recovery mission and I have to spawn back here, I need to get back there fast and he's fast. So, let's get to the Chopper. And my Argentavis. Buzzkill. And kind of tells it all. And we got extra room up here if I want to park other birds. Which I have at times. Beautiful little aviary, aviary, and you don't have to fly up here, you can also come in through that door and there's a ladder that goes all the way up through the trap door. Really cool design. Um, we'll go into this other dino area. This is for large dinos and stuff. And when I started here, I had a little A-frame that I built, not when I started here actually. I had like a little shack hut back here. Two by six or something, and then I built like an A-frame here and uh, this little shed here, which then I created this big one because I accidentally got a uh, um, Tyrannosaurus Rex all by accident. I happened to run across the 180, and I was like, uh, "No, we're not going to not tame that." Uh, this is my Triceratops. Uh, he's not the highest level, but um, you know, I got him at when I was still early in the game. I mean, huh. yeah. Uh, of course, Moss Chops. He's a little tanky guy. Upstairs, I got a whole crew of uh, Jaboas. I'm gonna move them all around. It's really weird, they all act exactly the same at the same time. It's really weird. Or well, some of them are, are a little bit different. But, uh, yeah, I'm gonna like move those all around the place and set them free to hop around. Stuff I just haven't done yet. Or decided where to distribute them. This is a Lystrosaurus mark over here. Like I said, these guys give off passive XP. So uh, whenever I need to put one in some place, I give them passive XP, like I would do hit these as I go through. And everything gets passive XP, and I can bring up their levels as we go along. Of course, these are tech Parasaurs. I like them better than the regular Parasaurs because they're just sitting around anyway because they are set to be turrets and detect enemies. Uh, here I have uh, three Quetzals. I actually have another Quetzal that I've got while I was uh, actually filming that intro. Uh, I have been flying along. Uh, and I looked up and there was a high level Quetzal, like, like a 156 or something. I don't know what it came out at, like 250 or 260 or something like that. But she's not here, she's in a pack somewhere. But I got three quetzals here. Um, <clears throat> of course, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. 
And I got two Spinosauruses over here. They're mean. Spinos are just plain mean. And they're boxers. They get up on their hind feet and beat the hell out of you. Let's go on up here, I guess. We got our Tech Rexes. We got a couple of Tech Rex. I've got like three or four of them actually. These are a couple males. I do have a female, but she just took up too much room sitting here. It was hard to get by, so I thought, yeah, I'll just only put up two of them for display. You know, these are display models anyway. So let's go on all the way down here. Look at that beautiful view. That's what it's all about, man. Yeah, shit like that. So here we have Procopta. like they did in the prehistoric days, except for their, their nose is a little bit longer. They're more pug nose than that, but they're very close. Uh, these are my um, uh, tapajaras. Uh, this is one I love especially because it looks like it's camouflaged. And these flying, this is gorgeous. When I first seen this thing, it was like, oh my god, I am definitely going to tame that. I'm not going to screw this up. And uh, then I have this tan one here. Gorgeous guy. Or gal. This one's a gal. The Theozinosaur. I mean, just look at those, those claws. She will rip you to shreds. Literally. Uh, but she's a hell of a harvester. And this one's actually red, white, and blue. Which I call a patriot. That skin is actually red. Here we have our Dinopithecus. I have uh, two different versions here. I have the ones with the gold chest, and their noses are different. They're just like dark on the sides there, whereas these have the orange, orange highlights on their nose, on the upper part. And they have the white chest, which is, this is what I was breeding, and I had a couple of brown ones, and it ended up coming up with a black and a brown chest. And I thought they looked kind of cool, so I decided to make it a separate uh, breed that I have here, basically. Uh, now these are my saber tooth. Uh, I didn't have any that actually looked good, and they, they were all weird colors because it was the uh, Valentine's event, and so they have a lot of bold colors and stuff, really a lot of pinks and stuff, and bright reds and blues and all kinds of crazy stuff. And I was mutating, I was, I mean, breeding a totally different color, and they mutated this yellow. So that's the only reason I saved it. I got one with the red, red, red face, and one with the. Uh, <clears throat> with the dark purple mask. And I call it the Batman mask. The closest thing I had, I was trying to make it look like a regular tiger, and the closest thing I had was a red one, and it was a dark red, and it was just like not even close. Well, I was uh, actually mating two blue ones, which I thought looked horrible. Uh, they're kind of a pink and purpley blue, I guess, something like that. I don't know. It was really bad. Uh... And it mutated this orange. And I said, that's even closer to the real tiger. So I'll take it. And this one was one of my originals. Try not to get the words on here. But I think the brown and black like that looks really good, especially with the, with the Batman mask. That's what I call it, the Batman mask. And as we come down here further, these are my hyena dons. I, I didn't mean to tame hyena dons. It's just that uh, they were kind of like wandering into my area here, and they can be, you know, fairly nasty to, to your pets and stuff like that. And I ended up killing all of them except the, the main one. And I had a couple of them end up being max level, so I just said, you know, and I have this one down in the end here. I just thought it was gorgeous. It looks so much like regular hyenas. And so that's what I was going to breed. I also had a totem brown one. Uh, this is the total brown one. Total brown one. I had this black and white one. I had the brown and black one. And uh, I was mating... Um, <clears throat> I was mating these. The brown. And I had a male and a female mating them. And they should look exactly the same. And they mutated and made this blue one. Which has the same stripes and spots and stuff. Which I thought was kind of cool looking. 
So I've got, you know, mommy and daddy for that. Everything you see here, I have a mommy and daddy for in storage. So in case something happens, like if I take it out and it gets killed, I can make another one in like five minutes. So it's not going to hurt me. And I, I put saddles on them. These are meat packs on these guys here. But I was uh, breeding two per perfectly brown tan ones here like this. And they mutated into this one with these kind of orange spots and stripes and stuff. Which I thought was really cool looking. So, let's move on, shall we? We've got the Equus, which is the horse, of course. And I was actually uh, breeding two blonde ones and trying to uh, breed darker stripes in them because they had really light colored stripes. Again, it was kind of like a uh, Valentine's event. They were kind of like neon green, but like light and just didn't look good at all. Uh, so I had this, this other one. I was trying to breed the dark stripes into it and they were both light colored and they mutated and made this gray one these brown socks or gold socks and ears and I just thought he was gorgeous and I immediately aborted my other plan and started breeding these. So I have a whole herd of these in storage. I just have one here on display. And of course, the unicorn. Um, up until yesterday, uh, my highest level of unicorn was 180. I did have some 170 something. Uh, which is nowhere near max level one. And I thought yesterday, while well, just goofing around, I thought I'll go take a quick look at the closest spot where you can find unicorn. And I see this white right out there by a brontosaurus running across this meadow. And I threw the eyeglass on it, and sure enough, it was a max level 180 female unicorn. And this is her right over here. She came home with me. Oh, that's the male. This has got to be the female. Yeah. She came home with me. And so then I started breeding my 180 with my uh, 270 until I had a matching pair of 270s. So I got male and female unicorns. I got them coming out my wazoo. But these are my, my pets and stuff like that. I guess we should venture on. So that leaves us to the pagoda. Again, it's a, it's an Aaron Longstaff design. He wants you to modify them. I did. It's like at least another level higher because I wanted that whole top part to be glass. So I'll kind of show you that there. Let's just go on inside first, I guess. Now this whole front area here on his design is all solid wood. I decided to put in all the windows. I think he has windows up on the upper one, those small regular windows. But all the big glass windows, I put all that in and designed that. Because, again, his was all wood, like a traditional pagoda. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I want you to be able to look in and see this beautiful place. You know what I mean? Looking in through the windows. And so that I can look out and see all this beautiful landscape. So we'll go inside here. And over here we have you know, a fabricator, we got a smithy, we got a forge, we got our mortar and pestle, bookshelves for our recipes and things like that. Now he doesn't have this door here in his design, but I put it in because it allows me to use this and go through the back area and create a back door, which his design does not have. And you just don't ever have a, a house without a back door. You know, you don't know what's peeking on your front door. Now this area here, he also has blocked off, but I opened it up because why waste all this storage space? And when I came down here, the way it's designed, these pillars only go down about a quarter of the way or halfway. And I decided to extend them all the way to the floor because it looks more realistic like it's supposed to, like, you know, they're actually support instead of just something I can get away with in this game. So we go to the other side now. Both sides have that fancy little furnace or fireplace there with a chair nearby, and I wanted everything to look like you know it's lived in. I don't want the chairs to be nice and square and shit like that. Again, we got a map. I like to put my mortar and pestle on the table like it's like it's an eating utensil. It's the closest thing we got to, to a bowl and spoon and stuff anyway. Uh, refrigerator. We got a dehydrator there, and I believe we're still probably cooking this meat here. Let me check. Yeah, we're done cooking. Turn that off. 
all that meat. So let's sit there a little bit anyway. Because I need the spoiled meat. Now this goes upstairs, but if you look up, you'll see that second floor has a glass floor in it. And so does the third floor, and so does the top of the entire place. So you can look out if it was nighttime, you can see stars up there. As it is, you can see clouds. And this takes you on up to my room here, which, you know, bookshelf. Got a table sitting there, I got a fireplace over there, my bunk bed. But I really can't do anything about the tree. It's because this is the only place I can put this pagoda and put it right up next to that tree. And I don't want to get rid of that tree because it looks so cool. So I got to just deal with this. It's not really a big deal. As long as you know what's in the room. And then you go over here, there's a ladder. And as you climb up the ladder, it takes you to this floor up here. And I haven't actually finished this. Uh, this area right here next to me on the upper part by the glass. There'll be a glass floor that goes all the way around to the other staircase. So you'd be actually standing on the glass looking out at this level. You know, the pool looks pretty good from here. Nice lighting and stuff. Uh, but this doesn't go all the way up, and that is all the glass. Oh, it is nighttime. <laughs> or did it just change? But yeah. You go out here and you go up. And this area. But it's made so you can see everything, like the hill and the mountains and the stars and the sky. And you can look like a little balcony. Let me duck down to get out. It's because of the way the uh, edge of the ceiling come in there. A nice little balcony out here. And the little sparkly things that are floating around, that's because of the type of power source that I'm using. And it allows me to not have to use wires. And it's really kind of annoying. I don't like it. I wish I could turn that effect off. And this is kind of cool having glass ceilings everywhere and stuff. Same thing over here, your glass ceilings. And it's really cool because you can see all the way down to the bottom level. And I got it all lit up so it looks good at night. But that's my place.